Bong. Holy crap. Hey guys, our topic this week is another viewer request. This one came from Facebook though, so we'll not be giving out the name since we didn't think to check into that until the writing of this video and well, Facebook tends to use your real name. So, that being said, our topic this time is the Crow Father. Yes, that's apparently one word. From the Darksiders series. We'll be going over his history and abilities. Okay, so, before we go on, in this video, we'll make a number of passing references to information covered in more detail in some of our previous Darksiders lore videos. We will explain all of the information pertinent to the Crow Father here in this video. However, if you want a more full and complete understanding of the Crow Father, Old Ones, the well itself, and how they all tie together and interact, it will likely be worth your time to check out those other videos, before or after continuing this video. As such, we provided a link in the upper right hand corner, here. Alright, so to begin with, the Crow Father is an Old One. In Darksiders terminology, that simply means that he has been kicking around scrounging up secrets since before Heaven, Hell, the Chart Council, and the Nephilim themselves were a thing, making him millennia old. He is in fact rumored by some to be the very oldest of the Old Ones, which, if understanding is correct, would make him the very oldest being in all of creation. There is some possibility that that rumor is just hearsay, however, for reasons we will explain later in the video. But no matter his place in the Old One Age hierarchy, he is undeniably ancient by just about anyone's standards. He is in fact so old that what information we have on the Crow Father doesn't even include his actual name. He is always referred to by one of two titles, Crow Father or Keeper of Secrets. He has great power over crows, though whether this is all crows or merely those occupying what must be a great global rookery, more on that later, on his world is unknown. He spends his time sending his crows throughout the realms of creation, learning secrets and hoarding information. He is a keeper of ancient knowledge that has been lost by time or purposefully buried in days gone by, knowing things both known to all and remembered by few. He has a reputation for knowing things that others may have forgotten or believe best left buried. In fact, his only two appearances in universe both come about due to other beings seeking him out because he's believed to have knowledge no one else has. Beliefs that it should be noted are at least partially accurate as in both instances he knew the answers to the Seeker's questions, though whether he was the only one who knew or still remembered is unknown. It's worth noting that considering his advanced age, be he the eldest of the old ones or simply an old one, it's entirely possible that some of the forgotten knowledge and information in his possession, considered by others to be long-held secrets, were in fact the modern news or recent discoveries during his younger days. He's old enough for many of his ancient secrets not to have been ancient when he learned them. So, chronologically speaking, the Crow Father first shows up on our radar shortly after the formation of the Four Horsemen. Upon their initial formation, the Horsemen's first task was to annihilate every other member of their race, the Nephilim. While doing so, the Horseman Death carried an amulet that absorbed all of the souls of his fallen brethren, so that when the carnage had ended, he literally carried the weight of every soul born to the Nephilim race upon his neck, minus his Horsemen brothers and sister. He did this under direction of the Charred Council, with the intended end result being that the Nephilim souls would be destroyed, rather than being allowed to flow into the Well of Souls and eventually be born into the cosmos once again. However, instead of destroying the amulet and 99.9% .9 of his own race, Death instead struck a deal with and gave the amulet to the Crow Father. In exchange for keeping the amulet safe and, yes, hidden, even from the Charred Council, powerful arbiters of balance that they were, the Keeper of Secrets would be allowed to delve into the memories of the entire Nephilim race, as their souls were literally at his mercy, leaving him plenty of time to learn all that they knew, gaining every secret in the Nephilim's possession. However, the amulet was bound to Death's soul, so, in order for the Crow Father to carry it, it would have to be unbound from Death's soul, bound to the Crow Father's soul, and a small symbolic bond of souls would have to be made between the Crow Father and Death himself to act as a sort of connective spiritual tissue. As such, the Crow Father selected one crow from amongst his vast army of little hedgebirds, severed his link to the bird, mostly, and connected it to death, binding the unliving creature to death presumably forever. With the bonds broken, altered, and remade, death and the Crow Father parted ways, and the Keeper of Secrets began to pry into the minds of the fallen Nephilim so that he might live up to his name. The Crow Father was next encountered some nebulous time later, 
Though we can surmise, it was likely at least 500 years or more, since this next encounter takes place in the Darksiders Abomination Vault novel, wherein it is noted that Death has been on hiatus for 500 years or so, and presumably his secret deal with the Crowfather took place before he went on an Immortals vacation. It is in the pages of this book that we get the best glimpses of the Crowfather's level of power. As one might expect of an immortal being who spends his time gathering all the knowledge he can get his hands on, the Crow Father wields a great deal of mystical might. He is, at the very least, an archmage of the highest order. To say nothing of whatever powers he may be granted as a member of his unknown ancient species, during the events of the Abomination Vault novel, the Crow Father is approached by emissaries of the book's antagonists in the form of a cadre of maker made golems asking the Crowfather what he might know about the Grand Abominations, weapons of mass destruction created by the Nephilim. Specifically, how to activate them and where to find more. The Crowfather, who despite his deal with death, never seems to have any particular desire to see visitors, told the brass creatures to stick it and leave his domain. He holds an entire, though seemingly barren, world under his dominion known as the Vale which acts, in just about every way you could imagine, as his sanctum. And if you've read, watched, or heard of Archmagi in just about any setting, ever, then you know that tangling with an Archmage within their seat of power is a bad, bad idea. Undeterred, the book's antagonist proceeds to throw an army of golems at the Keeper of Secrets, presumably either in hopes of getting him to surrender and reveal the information, destroy him out of anger or vengeance, or simply to kill him and hope to find the information that they were after amidst his home in the aftermath. Whatever the enemy's plans, they all came to naught. Because the Crowfather, when attacked, proceeded to drop the full force of his might upon the invading golem army. He summoned flocks of crows that were literally capable of blotting out the sky in places. He called upon magical storms. He hurled ice upon the invading golems. He warped the earth, capturing his foes and dashing them to pieces. He took a stick, a cane, a cudgel he had with him, and he, this guy, this shrimpy, wrinkly-looking old dude, this guy, physically smashed golems with more than enough force to shatter bend and break both stone and metal, and he did it all with a level of concentrated boredom you or I might experience while mowing the lawn. Yes, he had help near the end from Death, as Death's Crow had felt an empathic sense of danger from his former master, but the tone of the book indicated that the duo's collective destruction of the army was the work of equals, it was not the scene of a rescue. Thereafter, Death and the Crowfather have a brief conversation that mostly consisted of Death saying, What the crap? Why did you summon me? You're not supposed to be able to do that. With the Crowfather responding with, I didn't. Why do I want you here? I never want anyone here, and I've had way more visitors than I care for today already. We just killed them together. Hello? Before the two of them work some very nifty mojo together that consists of the Crowfather planting the recently deceased soul of a crow within a golem's core, mingling it with the base life essence there, and allowing Death to necromantically interrogate it, while the Crowfather acted as interpreter for the Crow's spirit. After Death finally left the Veil, the Crowfather spent time sifting through the memories of his thousands of crows from during the seat on his home. After some time, he found memories of his crows having sighted an angel commanding a portion of the Gillum army, and, using Death's crow dust, telepathically sent him the information, giving Death a key piece of information in his then-current investigation. The Crowfather isn't seen again until what has only been described as eons later, during the events of Darksiders 2, wherein he plays several roles, including enemy, information resource, quest giver, and narrator, with the Crowfather coming back into play because death has come to him seeking a way to absolve his brother War of the crimes of which he was charged in Darksiders 1. Darksiders 2 takes place during War's 100 year imprisonment, and yes, pretty much every interaction we have with the Crowfather involves death. While their last meeting wasn't exactly touchy-feely, when Death comes knocking on the Crowfather's door at the beginning of Darksiders 2, the Keeper of Secrets starts the conversation from a place of borderline hostility, and as the conversation and the game itself unfolds, it becomes clear that the millennia of being bound to the souls of the slaughtered Nephilim has slowly driven the poor old Crowfather mad. 
Do keep in mind that he's been spiritually bound to thousands of powerful, hateful beings screaming and whispering in his ear for literally the entire length of humanity's history on Earth, as the Nephilim became extinct shortly before the race of man was placed on Earth. Few are the creatures that could withstand the angry, maddening whispers of an entire species for that period of time. As such, when Death comes seeking a way to absolve his brother War of his crime, the Crowfather teases Death with a way to find what he seeks before demanding that Death take back the amulet of Nephilim souls and destroy it. Death refuses, and the two engage in a battle that, based upon the scenes from the book, seems likely to have been planned to end in the Crowfather's death by the Crowfather himself, who said before the battle began that Death would not pass while the Crowfather still lived. As the strengths brought to bear by the Crowfather were paltry in comparison to those rained down upon the army of golems millennia earlier. Though the argument could also be made that the Nephilim inflicted madness had negatively affected not just his mind, but his powers as well. Regardless, the duel ends in the Crowfather's death, and with his dying breath, he destroyed the amulet of Nephilim souls, shattering their housing and burying them in Death's body, along with the souls they carried, forcing him to carry the burden that he had heretofore refused. Then, the Crowfather opened a portal to send Death on his journey, even as life faded from his own body. This is where we come to the part that has several people thinking that perhaps the Crowfather is not as old as some believe. After his death, Death encounters the Crowfather again later in the game within the City of the Dead. That doesn't seem terribly out of place until you consider the Makers. The Makers are another race of old ones. They too have lived as a race since long before Heaven, Hell, and everything that spawned thereafter. And they have an interesting relationship with the Land of the Dead and the Well of Souls. Most creatures, when they die, travel to the City of the Dead to have their souls purified before being sent to the Well of Souls to wait and eventually be reborn sometime in the future. However, the Maker's souls do not pass into the City of the Dead or the Well of Souls in this manner. In fact, the Makers themselves claim that their people, and therefore their souls, are too old to be drawn into the Well of Souls. So instead, they seal the souls of their fallen dead into mystical stones, which are then used in Maker crafting. The common belief is that if the Makers are too old to pass into the City of the Dead, and the Crowfather is supposed to be the eldest of the Old Ones, shouldn't his soul have the same problem? As such, it is a commonly held belief that the Crowfather is instead simply a very old, old one, and not the very eldest of them. However, a second possibility exists. Well, probably several, but one more that we could think of off the top of our heads. The Crowfather was known for having knowledge no one else had or remembered. As such, it is not inconceivable that he willed himself into the City of the Dead of his own accord regardless of what course his soul would naturally have taken without action on his part. But that is all conjecture either way. What we know for sure is that he did in fact end up in the City of the Dead, and due to his changed demeanor, both being more friendly towards death and seemingly being cured of his madness, it seems likely that, by death's arrival in the City of the Dead, the Crowfather's soul had already been purified thus cleansing him of the Nephilim's influence as he had wished back during the game's beginning. Thereafter, he acted as a guide for Death, showing him what needed to be done to accomplish Death's goals of saving his brother, and revealing during the process that he had likely known how to do so all along. And that's basically the Crowfather. Eldest, question mark, of the Old Ones, and amusingly Odin-like figure of the Darksiders universe. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave us a like, and if you have ideas for a topic you'd like to see us do videos on in the future, let us know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, be they lore or let's play, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, this has been Two Men and a Mike, signing off. Hey guys, you can click the link in the left for our last lore video. You can click the link on the right for our last let's play. And right here in the middle, that orb, you can hit that to, to subscribe. subscribe. Also, ring the bell if you want to be notified when we post a new video. This, this is, is Two Men and a Mic. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching.